it takes one BTU to change one pound of water one degrees Fahrenheit. So if this water is completely liquid at 32 degrees and I want to raise it to 33 degrees, that's one BTU. How many BTUs would it take to change one pound of ice at 32 degrees solid to 32 degrees liquid? What's interesting about that is as heat transfers into this water, the temperature of this water is going to go up. As B2 the heat energy into this water, it will climb in temperature. That's very sensible and easy to measure with a thermometer. However, on this one, we have ice. And as I put more and more B2 the heat energy into this ice, it's going to stay at 32 degrees. The difference is we're going to end up with a less and less solid ice and more and more liquid. But it's still going to be at 32 degrees because it's a saturated temperature. It's a mixture of liquid and a solid. There's two different states. There's latent heat going on right here. So as long as there is liquid and there is solid together, this is going to be at 32 degrees. You can actually test your instruments by this as long as it's distilled water and you have ice and water together. Give it time to equalize, put your thermometer probes in there and it's going to be at 32 degrees. So here is liquid and there's mainly solid in this at 32 degrees. But back to our question, how many B2s to melt one pound of ice, to take one pound of ice from a 32 degree solid to 32 degrees entirely liquid? 144 B2s heat energy, 144 B2s. It only takes one B2 to make it go from 32 to 33, but it takes 144 to make it go from 32 solid to 32 liquid. That's latent heat. Now it's not nearly as powerful as our evaporation we talked about before. That's 970 from 212 liquid to 212 vapor. So it's definitely much less than that, but it's still very significant. 144 BTUs to melt one pound of ice. It's not just melting that pound of ice. That ice is absorbing heat as it changes state. So as it changes state from a solid to a liquid, it's absorbing heat. It's absorbing heat from the air around us. Now, it was very difficult to get both of these at 32 degrees because this one I had to make sure I had just a few slivers of ice to keep it at 32, and it's just about melted. And on this one, it was a solid block of ice, and I had to actually heat the ice up to get it at 32. Too. and I'm getting more and more liquid. As I said here in this room, the temperature is very warm. We're at 95 degrees. So as the heat is going to go into both of these, this one's going to rise in temperature, whereas this one's going to stay the same temperature. It's just going to melt more and more ice. Once all of the ice is completely melted, then it can start changing sensible heat and rising up in temperature. Now what's cool about that is we can actually cool with ice. John Gorey invented the ice machine way before Willis Carey ever invented the air conditioner. And what he found was he could take ice and put ice in buckets and he could move air across it. And what would happen is the air moving across the ice would cause the ice to melt. As the ice melted, the heat left the air and went to the ice. So the air came out cooler. He's actually able to treat patients for yellow fever and had much better results at cooler temperatures. However, it was very expensive for him to buy ice. So he invented the ice machine to make his own ice. And then he thought, man, I could market this and sell it. And it never took off during his era. But ice machines still a very important part today. If we're going to make ice, and I have 32 degree liquid water, and I want to make it turn to 32 degrees solid, I have to remove out of this liquid 144 B2s of heat energy. Once I remove 144 B2s of heat energy, this 32 degrees liquid will turn to 30 degrees solid for one pound. As you have more pounds of water or ice, you're going to have more B2s it's going to take to do that. But that gives you an idea of what's happening. Now let's apply it to something that's going to make more sense to you. Let's say we have two coolers. And in this cooler, we fill it with five pounds of 32 degree water. On this other cooler, we fill it with five pounds of 32 degree ice. Now let's take a look at that. Five pounds of 32 degree water and five pounds of 32 degree ice. They both have the same amount of weight. They both have the same temperature in them. The difference is during the day, as heat energy goes into the cooler, 
this temperature of the water will start to rise. It will sensibly rise. And as the heat continuously goes into this cooler, the temperature of the water will go up. And it's going to continue to happen until we get to an equilibrium to where the water is the same temperature as the air. And as the water warms up, the heat transfer will slow down. So once you get to just a few more degrees, it takes much longer. Right now, it's already heating up. I can tell this is already above 32 degrees. All the ice is gone and I can already feel a difference in temperature. So the heat from this room has already made this water increase above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this cooler that has only 32 degrees water in it, for every five B2s of heat energy that goes in, makes that water heat up one degree Fahrenheit. So there's five pounds of water, 5 B2 goes in, now it went from being 32 degrees liquid to 33 degrees liquid. Another 5 B2's heat energy goes in, it goes from being 33 degrees liquid to 34 degrees liquid. And as B2's continuously go in, the water heats up. We started out with 32 degrees liquid, and the temperature room is 95 degrees. That means we have 63 degrees to go from 32 liquid all the way up to 95 degrees liquid. The difference is we now have 5 pounds of water. So if we take 63 times 5, that's 315 BTUs heat energy. So it takes 315 BTUs to take 5 pounds of these, 5 of these, from 32 degrees liquid all the way up to 95 degrees liquid. 315 BTUs really isn't that much heat. So if I used 5 pounds of liquid only, it really wouldn't control the heat for very long at all. On the other hand, if I have five pounds of solid ice, we're gonna have a lot more to work with. I'm gonna have five times this much right here, but it's all solid. It's gonna take 144 B2s to melt one pound of ice and still be at 32. To melt five pounds of ice, it's 720 B2s of heat energy, and it's still gonna be at 32 degrees. So 720 B2s of heat energy, and this is still gonna be at 32 degrees. Whereas in this example, it took 315 BTUs and we're completely worthless. In this example, 720 BTUs of heat energy and we're still at 32 degrees. So this is why that we put ice in our cooler when we go camping is because the ice, the latent heat of the ice melting, changing state from a solid to a liquid. As it changes state from solid to liquid, it absorbs heat. There's a massive amount of heat transfer. There's a massive amount of B2 capability in a change of state, way more than this worthless sensible heat. As this solid changes state, it's a massive amount of heat. 144 B2s for one pound, of five pounds, seven 720 BTUs just to make it change state. So we go camping, we don't just want to put five pounds of 32 degree water, we need five pounds of ice. And of course, the more pounds of ice that we use, the more latent heat capability we have. So it's not just about that cooler having a cooler material in it, latent heat yet again wins the day. Now it's not nearly as powerful as the 974 evaporation, but it is definitely something to think about.